Italy's new right-wing leaders are on course to win a clear majority in both houses of parliament. The alliance of parties from the right is led by Giorgia Meloni, who's likely to become Italy's first woman prime minister and its first far-right leader since the Second World War. She's promising to restore national pride and says she'll work to bring unity rather than division. Her government will have to tackle a raft of pressing economic problems after she made election promises to ease energy costs and cut taxes. It was a night of triumph for Giorgia Meloni. If we are called on to govern this country, we will do so for everyone. We will govern with the aim of uniting people and seeking to make them more united rather than divided. On Monday morning, Italian newspapers were emphatic on the sheer scale of her victory, with one saying she had taken Italy. Near final results show the right-wing alliance of Maloney's Brothers of Italy, Matteo Savini's Lega and Silvio Berlusconi's Forza Italia winning around 44% of the vote, far ahead of its left-wing rivals, with Maloney's party alone winning some 26%. But with turnout down to a historic low of just 64%, in Rome, reactions to Maloney's win were mixed. I don't follow her much, honestly, but I prefer the coalition that her party is part of. I'm not happy. I didn't vote for her, but it's democracy. She has to prove that she can live up to the role and prove she can represent all Italians, both those who voted for right-wing parties, but especially those who didn't. While Maloney may have been all smiles on election night, there's likely weeks of talks ahead before a new government is formed. If Maloney and her right-wing allies do end up in power, they'll be confronted with crises from the get-go, with Italy struggling with soaring living costs and Europe facing down Russian aggression. I'm now joined by Tobias Bachele. He's a member of the German parliament for the Green Party and member of the Foreign Policy uh, Committee. Now, again, a right-wing party has won an election in an EU country, but in her campaign, Meloni softened her anti-EU stance significantly. So uh, do you believe her? Well, I don't think it's the right time to trivialize the rise of right-wing extremism. So um, I do not believe her on an ideological scale. But I would also say that in those times uh, when on, with the Russian attack on, the, on Ukraine, it needs to be clear, and apparently it is even clear to right-wing extremists, that we only stand a chance on all the global issues as the European Union if we join forces. So I don't really believe her that she changed her mind, but I do believe that the current situation in the world is forcing her to not push that part of her agenda at the first point. But as I said, I don't think there is a reason to uh, well feel at ease at the moment. OK. Uh, but do you think that Meloni will align Italy with, with Hungary, for example, and Poland uh, to tip the balance in EU decision-making uh, to the right? Um, yes, definitely at certain points. I think um, it is going to be really interesting how the coalition uh, that probably is going to be formed in Italy is going to behave regarding the Russian sanctions and the Russian uh, war in Ukraine. But on many other issues, I'm pretty sure that they will join um, the right wings uh, in, in like uh, throwing stones at the, into, into the EU or trying to do that. But on the other hand, also, and I think uh, Hungary and um, um, Poland are seeing that right now. We do not accept that. I mean, there is, in a matter of, there is a rule of law, a common rule of law we agreed on, and uh, this is the responsibility to every government to actually stick to it. Now, uh, it seems that right-wing parties are on the rise across the EU. Are you worried about that? Of course, I'm worried about worried about that. I'm worried about their their cease to power, but I'm also worried about it that we are only or not we as the Greens as progressive. I think we've been talking about that for quite a while. That we need to wake up. That there are certain powers on the rise. Um, but for example, the Conservatives, which I I believe they really have a huge responsibility to to back against this rise of right wing extremists. For them. 
I really hope that it's the last time they see, see something like that and that it's a wake-up mm. call. And well, right wings will seize power if we just play them down. We need to take them serious and we need to really, really have a front against that, um, against them and their, their, their agitation, yes. You say, you say left uh, left wing parties like yours, the, the the German Greens need need to wake up. But what does that mean? What do you need to do? No, that's that's what I meant. I think we as a society together we need to wake up. That there are people on the rise who have a huge take on populism and have not really the interest of our Europe at heart, but rather of like small groups who are not very inclusive. Although now, of course, Maloney said that she will, and I think. We've been warning about it, but um, it's sometimes apparently I would I think it seemed like we were warning about it and people seem to think we were warning about it because it wasn't that it was just going into another direction and we wanted our Europe to go. But I think it is about more. And I really would rather put the conservatives um, well into position that they they really need to take their responsibility. There are people we can hardly argue with because we have a different idea of how things uh, are supposed to go and that's fine that's a democracy what it is all about but um i think it's really important that that our call for swift and hard and harsh words and action against right-wing extremists it's not about only only about political ideological approaches or whatsoever but it's really about saving and defending our democracy. And I think that's something we can mm. all agree on. And I really hope that it's a wake up call for those who believe it's not their job to do, but in fact it is. Tobias Bachele, a member of the German parliament for the Green Party, thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Well, for more on this, we can now speak to Teresa Coratella. She's the program manager for the European Council on foreign relations and joins us from Rome. Now, Meloni and her party have never been in power before and ideologically they have roots in Italy's neo-fascist movement. Why did Italians turn to them in such large numbers? Well, thank you so much for the invitation. Uh, well, I think that uh, the biggest factor for success is that in the last four years, she always seated at the opposition. She was never a member of any of the government that were formed after the 2018 elections. She always stayed at the opposition and during the last government of Mario Draghi, she was the only opposition party in the parliament. This gave her the opportunity and the possibility as the only opposition leader to always say her view and to present her view has quite opposite if compared to her competitors in the central right um, scenario, namely Forza Italia and the League. So she had 18 months to build her strategy, to build a concrete view of how she sees mm. Italian Europe, how she sees Europe. And on the other side, she really benefited from the fact that her allies, namely Berlusconi and Salvini, were really having mm. not the best times in their uh, political career. Teresa, you mentioned Europe there. Uh, Giorgio Meloni has a long record of bashing the European Union. Assuming she becomes uh, Prime Minister, what should we expect from Italy in terms of EU policy? I think that at the beginning she will have a very cautious approach toward every European things, every European dossier. This because her party is quite domestically focused. She, she will need some time to have a view on how to position herself as a European leader. Uh, I mean, her victory is really a success, but at the same time, this can be really the first but also the last opportunity for her to be a credible interlocutor in uh, Europe. And of course she has to feel the Mario Draghi legacy. If till yesterday we had a, an Italian leader 
able to dialogue with Paris and Berlin at the same level, a leader who was able also to push some concrete ideas on after uh, Russia decided to invade Ukraine. Hmm. Now, Giorgia Meloni is in a pretty difficult situation. She doesn't have the same relation with Schultz and Macron. She, in the past, she had rather chosen to build stronger alliances with Orban, for example, and Fidesz, and now with the PIS in Poland and Kaczynski. So she now needs to understand if she wants to continue on this path of building strong relations with the most Eurosceptic parties in Europe, or rather she might want to be um, a kind of moderate conservative leader able to dialogue also with the Paris mm. and Berlin. Now, Italian governments are notoriously short-lived. Uh, most of barely lasted a year. Can we expect that Meloni-led government, uh, if it if actually comes to power, to be any more stable? So, if you listen this morning to the declaration of the winners, let's say, they all said that finally Italy is entering a stable area of five years. Uh, I'm not sure this is going to, to be the case, not because Meloni doesn't want this, but the main challenge will come from the power of balance inside the coalition. Why I'm saying this, we have Salvini, who is among the biggest losers of this election. The same applies to Berlusconi, while Giorgia Meloni is the real and only big winner. This means that the coalition has already some issues regarding mm. the power of balance in, and the dialogue between the three leaders. Uh, so there are already some stress tests that the coalition needs to deal with. First of all, the formation of the government. Being Giorgia Meloni the first leader, this implies that she will probably keep for herself mm. the most important ministries. Then we have the um, a very important law to be approved in December, which is the budget law that with the recovery funds uh, implementation is going to be even more difficult. Mm. Uh, Teresa Coratella, so program she has manager. A... Oh, I'm sorry. I think I have to interrupt you there. Teresa Coratella, Program Manager for the European Council on Foreign Relations. Thank you very much, Teresa. Thank you. Well, for more on the Italian election, I'm joined now by Caterina Barley. She's a German EU lawmaker and a vice president of the European Union Parliament. Thanks for being with us. Now, you've compared Giorgia Maloney to Hungary's illiberal leader, Viktor Orban, and former US President Donald Trump. Do you think she will pursue similar policies if she becomes prime minister of Italy as expected? Well, we will see, but what she said before the elections um, doesn't give us much hope. She has uh, already announced to support Viktor Orban and to join him and uh, Mr. Morawiecki from Poland in uh, fighting for a Europe of the patriots, which of course means more egoistic politics from the capitals, from the member states, um, and they might be joined by Sweden. So this is not a good development for the European Union. Now, Georgia Maloney softened her traditional anti-EU stance significantly in this election campaign. Are you convinced by that? I'm not convinced yet. Of course, if she becomes prime minister, she will have the benefit of the doubt. Um, but we expect her to be, um, to be quite conservative on economic and financial policies, but to be ultra-conservative um, to populist when it comes to, um, for example, human rights, uh, rights of minorities, women's rights, um, but also uh, fueling this sort of patriotism that is one against the other. That we are already seeing, as I said, in Poland, in Hungary, uh, and in some other member states. And uh, this is really nothing that brings Europe together. What we need right now in this time of crisis. Now, you mentioned that you're concerned that Maloney will align Italy with Hungary and Poland. Uh, there are concerns that that could tip the balance of power in EU decision-making to the right. What concrete 
uh, impact do you think that could have on EU decision making? Well, the EU, the EU can only work if you try to find common solutions that, that fit everybody. That means compromise. And our experience with this sort of government is that they do not engage in compromises at all. They use unanimity principle, which we don't have in every decision, but in some very important decisions, they use this um, to blackmail and to, um, to serve their own interests. If that happens once, if that happens twice, you can live with it. But if that becomes the common form of policy making in the European Union, then that is not going to be a union anymore. Then it's going to be a club of, of uh, selfish egoists. Well, the European Union is not as unified as it once was with, the, with Britain having, having pulled itself out. You happen to be in the UK right now attending a conference of the opposition Labour Party. How concerned are you about it, how Italy will position itself with respect to relations to the UK? Well... We unfortunately see um, the government in the UK um, also drifting more and more towards uh, populism by attacking public media, especially the, the BBC, um, by um, attacking independent judges, by high-level corruption, um, this sort of uh, development. So. Um, I think Georgia Maloney is still a different category, um, but we are seeing worrying developments um, also what con concerning freedom of press and, and rule of law in the UK. So I don't think they will be allies in this sense. I hope not. Um, but it is altogether a shift towards right-wing populism. This, I think, we, we have to acknowledge. Okay, we've been talking very much in general terms, but the European Union right now is dealing with a war next door in Ukraine and with a serious energy crisis. How do you see this change of government uh, coming up in Italy affecting those uh, situations? Well, first of all, the war in Ukraine, it is interesting that the three parties who, who, um, who created this, this coalition Two of those leaders, uh, Salvini and Berlusconi, are, are known to be Putin uh, fanboys, um, whilst uh, Giorgia Meloni is uh, on, more on the Ukrainian side. So that will be interesting to watch how Italy um, will act in this conflict, also when it comes to um, support in, in defense um, purposes. When it comes to, um, to the European Union, Again, in, in energy, we now need solidarity between, um, between the member states. Uh, we have very different situations concerning en energy supply in the different countries. So we need to help those who are most dependent um, on, uh, on the Russian sources. I think of Bulgaria, for example, or Romania. Um, I wonder if Italy, under this new government, is still willing to uh, show solidarity or just uh, to, to grab as much as they can for themselves. Catalina Barley, Vice President of the EU Parliament, thank you very much for talking with us. Very welcome. So, a convincing victory for the right-wing parties in Italy. DW correspondent Giulia Saldelli is in Rome. She spoke to a senior member of Giorgio Moroni's Brothers of Italy party about their win. I'm here with Ilenia Lucaselli. She is a member of parliament for Fratelli d'Italia, the party of Giorgia Meloni. Uh, Ms. Lucaselli, uh, Giorgia Meloni has said that she wants to govern for the entirety of Italy, for all of the population. But uh, looking at some of Fratelli d'Italia's policies, for example, some non-progressive policies looking at migration or LGBT rights or abortion, um, how is she going to unite the country with these topics that are so divisive? Well, first of all, uh, these are not uh, our priority right now because uh, the um, economy world that we are living right now, it's uh, very tough. And uh, I think our priority will be different in, you know, right away. 
uh, after that, I think that um, it's not that we are not progressive. Uh, we are conservative, which is a different uh, way to look uh, at our country and at, at, at the world. But uh, if you look at the Italian population, it's conservative. It's not, um, it's, it's not a population that uh, does uh, a war for immigrant or uh, other, other topics. So uh, what we'll do is, first of all, uh, give back to people uh, the dream to have a country that can lead in Europe and in the rest of the world. That's our goal. Uh, speaking about uh, being a conservative party, uh, the party has a history in post-fascism, if we look back to decades, and there are concerns, even though Giorgia Meloni has distanced herself from this past, that there really hasn't been much change on that front and that there's still some radical elements within the party. Is this concern legitimate? No, it's not. If you look at our percentage, Fratelli d'Italia uh, took 26% of the vote uh, in Italy, so unless you want to say that all the Italians are fascist, or most of them, it's, it's, it's something that is not true. No, we, we are not that. We are a new way to uh, think at the right uh, politics, um, and that's it. Is, there's no relationship between Fratelli d'Italia and uh, fascism or post-fascism. But there have been some cases recently in the party of members of the party who have, uh, for example, praised Hitler uh, or other members of the party who have had really tough and racist stances against Instagram, uh, against migrants, for example, on social media. How can one say that there are no more radical elements when we have examples of them? Well, stupid people are all around the world. So. Uh, we cannot control what people uh, do or say on uh, social, even when a party is so big. Uh, the important thing is that we don't have any institutional representative that think in that way, and that's the difference. We cannot control every single uh, Italian and what they do. Uh, looking at Europe, um, Giorgia Meloni has moved away from a Eurosceptic approach and said that she is a supporter of Europe and that she wants to work together with Europe. But when we look at certain issues, for example, the attitude towards Hungary, uh, your party in the European Parliament has voted in support of Orban's policies recently. Uh, is there a risk that there are going to be issues with Europe going forward? No, I think that um, we need to start uh, a, the right way to talk with Europe, which was something that we didn't do in the past years. Um, so we need to have a new way to think at Europe, and that's our goal. And um, that is uh, in relation with Italy, not with other countries. We will lead this country and uh, we have to be focused on our country and how to protect our interests in Europe, something that uh, the left party until now didn't do. Um, Orban and the attitude of your party and the other parties in the coalition, for example, towards Hungary, is just one of the issues where uh, Fratelli d'Italia and its coalition partners aren't always on the same page. We've uh, seen, for example, looking at Matteo Salvini, that he's known sometimes to rock the boat. How is Giorgia Meloni going to keep the coalition together to make this government last? Well, you know, when we uh, vote in the parliament at the end, uh, the center-right was uh, just one rock, and we vote uh, all the same. So, you know, sometimes uh, uh, w when you talk with journalists and you, you say some things that are in your mind, uh, it could not be understood in the right way. But then the vote speaks for you and for your party, and the center-right always vote in the same way in the parliament. So I think we will not have any type of issue. Ilenia Lucaselli, thank you very much. DW's Julius Sardelli there in Rome now for Reaction Outside Italy. I'm joined by our chief political correspondent, Melinda Crane, here in Berlin, and DW's Mark Sander in Brussels. Hello to you both. Melinda, what has the German government been saying about Giorgia Maloney's victory? 
It has said that it wants to wait for the final results uh, before issuing uh, an official response. And inofficially, the, uh, the reaction was restrained, to put it politely. The chancellor's deputy spokesperson said this morning that Berlin expects Italy to remain a quote unquote very Europe friendly country with very Europe friendly citizens. A finance ministry spokesperson said that Berlin's expecting the new Italian government to continue to respect the stability pact that sets the fiscal rules for the Eurozone. And if you listen to uh, reactions from other politicians, including politicians of the governing parties, that is certainly the utmost concern that many have. Germany's foreign, former justice minister, Katharina Barley, for example, who is now vice president of the EU parliament said that Maloney's victory represents a very real threat to constructive cooperation in Europe, while Green Party leaders, both in Brussels and in Berlin, say they fear the new Italian government might be not only anti-European, but also pro Putin. The one party in Germany that is definitely celebrating is the far right alternative for Germany, AFD. They said that with this victory and the victory of a right wing party in Sweden, uh, that left wing government in Europe is now very yesterday. Max, mixed reactions in Brussels and across the European Union, I would imagine. Absolutely correct, Terry. So as you can imagine, it was the, the far right opposition parties in Spain and in France, for example, the Vox Party and the Rassemblement National that were among the first to congratulate Meloni for her election victory, as were leaders of um, Eurosceptic governments such as Hungary and Poland um, that were in a celebratory mood. So you have that one camp that is celebrating, that's for sure. But the overall sentiment here in Brussels and across the European Union is more a worried one is more one of concern. Um, there are fears that Georgia Meloni will roll back on democratic freedoms within her country, um, and at the same time that she, she will make work, cooperation, partnership in Brussels and in the EU a lot more difficult in future. Italy has been a safe bet in the past, has been working very well with other European nations. Um, Meloni has campaigned on Italy first, on nationalist principles, so um, people here are very worried how this is going to play out. Now, the Commission itself did not uh, comment on the election victory. By principle, it does not. They only said um, they hope that there will be a constructive relationship with Italy. But uh, let me remind you, Commission President Ursula von der Leyen inofficially kind of positioned herself a few days ago when she said, quote unquote, we have the tool to deal with countries that don't respect EU values, hinting at Italy, hinting at Giorgia Meloni. So um, yeah, you can imagine uh, here in Brussels, they will be watching very closely what happens next. Max Zander in Brussels and Melinda Crane here in Berlin. Thanks very much to you both.